Before I jump into the content of this video, I just want to say I am so sorry. Ending a relationship is so hard. And if you're watching a video on how to get over a failed relationship, chances are you're taking the brunt of the experience now. But I'm here with you. And by the end of this video, I'm going to be real with you. I am not going to fix it. But I can help you chart a roadmap that'll get you started on a journey that you need to take to get through this. I did it myself. So there are a number of things that we can do, right? But when we're facing the breakdown of a relationship, what I have found is everyone wants to get over it. It's painful. It is a lot to dis-enmesh yourself from a person that you have been deeply, deeply connected with and intimate with for however long that was. It takes time to get over this, so be patient. But define for yourself what it means to get over them. What does that look like for you? Paint that picture. Without that clear picture of what your mind set is, how you're living, how you're interacting with the world and the space that you're in, you don't even know what get over means. You just want whatever that could be down the road. Really, really define it. For me, getting over my ex meant I wasn't thinking about her and arguing with her in my mind nonstop over the contentious issues that we had near the end. I was no longer looking to her for any sort of affirmation or looking for a response, an apology, a you're okay, any sort of like any sort of affirmation directed toward her was exhumed from my body, <laughs> expunged, I should say, from my body, right? <laughs> exhumed, it's not a funeral. I want you, right? If you want to expunge from your body all of that, at least I did, all of that need that I was directing toward this person. I wanted to be able to go through a whole day or even a whole week, and by the end of the week get to a point and realize, oh, I hadn't thought about this person anymore. That's what, for me, getting over was. And I had a lot of work to do because I was not in that space. The second thing that I felt I needed to do was to identify the places where I was being blocked by this relationship. And I noticed, and I was like this, I was worried at first about what could possibly be said about me to the people that I love and the friends that I know by this person who knows me intimately, knows my deepest and darkest secrets, knows the ways that I have failed in the most significant and troubling spaces, right? It was a worry for me. Fortunately, I was lucky enough that she actually ended up telling my children and the people that I know my deepest, darkest secrets. I was freed from that space. I no longer had to worry. Everybody knew how I had screwed up. They knew that I had cheated. My kids knew that I cheated on their mom. They knew that I had a prescription to smoke medical marijuana. They knew that I was not living by what they considered the standards of their church and their religious beliefs. And so that was not something that bothered me that she could possibly turn people against me by telling all the bad things that I had done. I didn't have to be blocked by that. What I was blocked by though, for me, was all of the ways that I felt like I wanted to justify who I was and how I was and seek from her some sort of affirmation because I was changing, standing up and finally showing, hey, this is me and some people like me like this and I wanted to be liked. <laughs> I wanted also financial freedom. I felt like there was a lot of difficulties there where our finances were really intertwined in the process of divorce. That's a difficult thing, right? My career. I was trying to build stuff and do things that I knew she didn't support me with and I was blocked there because I was still attached to her thinking I couldn't move into this space because I knew she would never let me when I was with her so I had a block there. I was also blocked in thinking that I was not capable at what I did because I felt like she didn't think I was capable. There were so many places I mean I could go on and on and on and it doesn't matter if these are real or not in some cases, they're not, right? You don't truly know anymore about this person. You're not with them. So what you may believe is happening and what may be happening could have nothing to do with reality. However, you gotta see where that block is. How are you being limited by this relationship? And then, once you understand that, you look at the emotions that are on the surface in connection to those blocks. Are you angry? When you feel anger, 
you, and it's in connection to a block, you run through all the lenses you can think of in connection to that emotion. Am I angry because some emotional thing has happened that I feel like I've been mistreated and I'm angry about that? Ferret that out. Take responsibility for that thing so that you are no longer putting blame on them. They're not responsible for changing anything in their behavior towards you anymore. They're not in your, that you don't have a relationship with them. You must learn to deal with them on the ground that you stand and on the ground they stand and let it all go. So emotionally you could be angry. Well, they're not treating me properly. Okay, so get over that. <laughs> Spiritually, you may be feeling, man, you know, I'm angry because they think I'm a bad person now and I do these things and they're saying I'm bad. Well, get over it. You can't, you can't attach that expectation to them. For you, you've got to let it go physically, socially, financially. It's like peeling an onion. You just run through it and you go through it over and over again and identify that. You're feeling sad. What is the reason for it? All of those emotions just run through that process. When you identify that stuff, it allows you then to really address what's going on and turn it inward. Quit, because what we often do, the reason we're feeling painful and we're feeling unhappy and we're feeling all caught up in this is we have expectations that were not met. We have attachments to this person that we cannot have. And our expectations and the attachments and the thoughts and feelings that we have where we wanted to be with this person are no longer in existence. So you let it go, you let it drop, and then you have to do the work. Once you've identified these things, you do the work. And I hear people say this all the time, I'm doing the work, I'm doing the work, I'm getting better. Are you doing the work? Are you truly doing the work? Now there are lots of ways to do work, right? I have what I call dailies. I have five the practices of reading daily, meditating daily, writing daily, and exercising daily. Four things, right? That was my work that kept me kind of functional, but I needed more than that. I had therapy, I did EMDR, I tried all kinds of modalities for recovery to make myself get better. And that's what you gotta do. For me, therapy, exercise, music, meditation, writing, these are all powerful things that help me. So find those things for yourself. And as you do that and go through the process of peeling, you will keep uncovering layers and upon layers of frustration, attachment, and really blame that you're placing on this other person. And you must learn how through this process to eliminate all of those strings of attachment that are making you feel upset and feel like you need to get over this failed relationship. And instead of getting over it, you just need to sever your mental connection to what's going on. Follow the process. And I promise you, as you do so, you'll get to that space, whatever getting over is in the definition of your mind, you'll get to that space. I have largely gotten there. I still fall back in little moments of things where I get frustrated and I have my methods of jumping right back into this process and I go boom, 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 and then I'm good. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm attaching myself to the wrong thing right now. I'm placing blame and frustration onto a person that should have no responsibility or power to do that to me. That's really where you wanna be. And then you know you're over and you can move on. So if you like that, I'd love to hear what your definition of getting over is, somebody, and how you're doing it. And if this is something that means uh, you know, a lot to you, then maybe you want to check out my next video coming up. It's how to feel worthy of love and what ended my marriage. Thanks for joining me. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm James Burnham.